see if we can get this started. Um, so we're in the meeting at 6.33 for the September 18th, 2024, meeting of the Montpelier Roxbury uh, Board of School Directors. Looks like we just got the shorter agenda. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Although we're happy to give you a few minutes to chat if you want. Um, uh, I do want to just start the meeting with a reminder that we have a continuing vacancy on the board. Um, uh, we One of the Roxbury seats, um, Kristen Gettler um, resigned in July, and we are looking for a member of the Roxbury community to um, to step up and uh, do some great service uh, and help Red out. Because Red's carrying a, a big heavy load there. So, um, if anyone is interested, uh, you can shoot an email to the board, uh, school board at npspt.org, or uh, me at Jim Murphy at the same. Uh, domain. Um, and I'm sure that any of us would be happy to talk to you about it if you have questions. And about it. Uh, so please, um, please, if you're interested and a member of Rockbury, um, we are really looking for someone to fill that role. It's very important that Rockbury have full representation. In this Public comment. Uh, the public comment is a period uh, where we take feedback and input from the public on whatever topic uh, uh, members of the public want to bring to our attention. Uh, we do not respond in real time, but it is very important to our decision making process um, and to just letting us know about uh, how people feel, issues we may not be aware of, uh, et cetera. So, um, even though we will not give you a response in real time, we are listening and it's very important to our decision-making process. Um, do we have any public comment? I'll start with the room. Anyone in the room? No. Um, and online, uh, I've not seen any hands. Okay. Um, so we will next move to the approval of the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda is um, where we kind of approve in mass um, items like minutes of prior meetings, uh, uh, draft agendas, et cetera, um, that don't really require discussion unless board members uh, feel an item should be pulled off and have questions about it or um, concerns. Uh, it allows us to do things more quickly. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I will second that. Good. Uh, any discussion or questions? I have a, a okay. point. The, um, <clears throat> the superintendent's report, um, let me grab it, has a little bit of information about the um, the transmission trans, transition for Roxbury Elementary school students to Union Elementary. And um, there's been a lot of great um, work and a lot of positive responses and communications. The last bullet, though, that UES teachers called caregivers in the first two weeks to discuss how each child is settling into their classroom is, is just not accurate. I think there have been a couple of conversations um, over the phone, and I know that there have been a number of emails and, and polite and kind and supportive dialogue via email, but there haven't been calls um, regarding each child. I just wanted to correct that one more point. Good note for accountability. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you for pointing that out, Rhett. Um, Jim. Jim. Jim is here. Oh, Jim. Um, hi. Uh, we received, I think, last week or something, a inquiry to the board about the cell phone policy of the school. And as a, a potential item for discussion, and I was just curious if that might be something we put on a future agenda. Uh, I thought I'd just tee it up for conversation. Um, yeah, we could actually. Um, well, actually, when I when I went to the high school uh, open house, there is a 
joining Byron Center is a committee that's been put together. It's a committee to that's put together inside of the high school with, I think, 11 students are on it, several faculty members, and Jason, I believe a few parents, too. Yeah. I'm not positive on that, though. Um, and they are researching and looking into current use, um, what students think, what faculty thinks, and they're doing a whole process internally around that. Um, the other thing I would say to the board is to, that that's going to get taken up by the legislature this year, um, hands down. I, we just know it will. Yeah. So you may just want to wait and see what the legislature does, legislative body does. Just another thought. And is that something that, does that committee have a timeline? The one that's in the high school? No, okay. I'm not on it. So I don't I don't know specifically, but I think Jason was planning a in-depth study. Yeah, because that's the kind of thing we could ask to have as a presentation, presentation yeah. to yeah, the board when it's concluded. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I was thinking too. I mean, my, my recollection of the open house is he was planning to have it concluded sometime this year. For, oh yeah, uh, possible, oh, yeah. yeah, possible action. Yeah, I just want to yeah. Sure. Um, no, and I that's a subject that's near and dear to my heart too. So my recommendation is that we give that committee a little time and then have have some sort of um, have the company up and give some sort of update and report, and then we also obviously will follow this in the legislature as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think that's that seems like a good way to deal with it because it's obviously <clears throat> something of concern and there's already movement occurring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for folks who don't know, there's a great article in seven days, not this week, I think, but last week it was the cover story. And it has a lot of it, it talks about our neighboring districts that have initiated bans and then interviews different um, health professionals, including my sister-in-law. <laughs> um, uh, who's a pediatrician in the South Burlington area. Um, and so has a lot of really great information for us as well as yeah. we continue to educate ourselves. Yeah, no, and there's a lot of information on this generally. It's a big topic right now, so. Um, Libby, um, if the legislature took action on it, do you think it would be for the upcoming school year? I don't know, it's a good question. My hunch would be that they would be for, not this school year we're in right now, but. But Usually with things like that, it's, it influences the next school year. 25, 26. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't remember that bill from last year. What the there was one was. for a while. Do you remember that bill? There was one that was trying to outlaw all social media in schools, including district usage and, and cell and, phones. It, it was an all and, encompassing. Yeah. And the use of technology for educational purposes. That's also referenced actually in this article seven days article yeah that kind of what that's what sunk it the yeah all technology opt out yeah, yeah. looks like s284 yeah but usually with bills that don't require a whole lot of money which this one and they say the next school year wow. yeah i was just thinking like if, if there was years in the future then we would want to kind of do our own deliberation now, but if it's next school year, then there's really less for us to work on. If the outcome is that there's a statute on panning or limiting or whatever, and there needs to be a policy written, then the benefit of waiting is that VSBA will write that policy and the board will have something to work off of. They'll write like a, you know, a model policy. Oh. Yep. Um, any more questions on the consent agenda? Just noticing that everyone's kind of on their cell phones. So we're talking about cell phone then. <laughs> uh. um, I was just curious, Libby. I haven't seen the roots and wings yet in our in just the meeting documents. Have they just not started? The first um, roots and wings went out today. Okay, that's why. That's what I think. And when it came out, I said it to Emma saying, "Make sure it gets that this gets in the next board packet." Great. So it just started today. Thank you. Excellent. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, so we are skipping the student presentation there. Totally, totally fine. <laughs> okay, great. Um, we just lost our, we just lost our lost our facilities director to a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you could do the policy monitoring right now. Okay. Oh, so, let's do that. Yeah, let's do policy monitoring. Um, oh, he's back. Well, let's do policy monitoring. So let's start it. Um, so mixing up the agenda a little. Um, do we have approval of three policy monitoring reports? A23, community engagement and vision, A24, board and superintendent relations, and FM 101 budget. Do I have a motion to approve those um, policy monitoring reports? So moved. We have a second. I'll second it. Discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Oh, wait, sorry. Looks like Tim raised his hand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, just one of them said we had a little bit more work to do, I think, is the community engagement and vision. And I was just wondering, what, what exactly is that? I'm not sure I, I followed that. Yeah. So um, last summer, the board worked on our top three priorities. Uh, and we solidif solidified and really refined two of the three, um, the ac academic excellence and the um, um, belonging and wellness. So they have, they like flow from our vision. They have, here's what we mean by these things. And then they have specific indicators of success that we can measure. And then our third one, community engagement and communication, we have it, it, it fits within our vision at, and is flowing from the visioning and process that we did leading up to that work last summer, but we don't yet have indicators of success. And the equity committee, um, I think in the spring, volunteered to take on the like, we'll draft this up and bring it to the board. Um, so that's why that's not complete yet. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and the equity committee is working on that now. Okay, awesome, thanks. Okay. Yep. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Andrew. Um, good evening. So you all have received the facilities report. Any specific questions that you have? Oh, yes, Joe. Yeah, the three acre, can you explain what that is? And so, is my understanding like if we don't do it, there's some sort of penalty or something? Well, we have to do it. Uh, it's new stormwater policy, about three, four years old. And it is any piece of property over three acres has to meet 50% of new stormwater regulations. So the state actually allocated money to do that project. So, um, and it actually started back in the day with Michelle. Uh, um, so we're all set to that. They had some problems with the bidding on their end. So the, the bids came in really high and we're really late. So they're just gonna rebid it this win this fall, late fall, early winter for next spring. And does it change like parking? Or fields? No, it basically enlarges up the stormwater collection area that we have. Other questions, <laughs> Brett? There's, um, there are, there's something about a well protection plan at RBS that needs to be completed. Is that something that can be completed by you and your team or is that a- uh, We're working with engineering ventures on that. Um, basically every, there's different uh, inspections and things, but uh, we are working with the state in uh, on, on that, updating that. That's, we're actually meeting down with the engineer. I'm meeting with the engineers next week on that one. So it's in the process. So it's really just updating what was in place, but it's it's complete. It's a, usually every three years, you just sort of do a random, not random, but a very quick, we contacted people, we know everybody, nothing has changed. This is a real comprehensive, how do you shut the system off? How do you turn it back on? What's our contingency plans, things like that. Is that something that you would recommend is done on a 
five-year window, 10-year window, or? Um, no, it, this is this comprehensive because it's, it's just because the well was put in, what, back in the 80s, I think. It's just been so long, and the paperwork over the years is sort of thinned out, so we're just sort of pulling the paperwork. We, being the school district and the state, are pulling our paperwork back together. Thank you. Yeah, but it'll be good to have an updated, yeah. some of the, you know, some of the contacts. The engineer that put the last report isn't even in business anymore. So it's it's a good thing to have done. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a few questions, but first I just wanted to say thanks. You know, take the opportunity to say thank you because the report is incredibly comprehensive and it's a, such a great and valuable resource for us to keep coming back to throughout the year, um, and also for leading up the team that is keeping our buildings in such great shape, as you noted in the report, even with all of the challenges we had last year, really moving things forward and keeping them to be like one wonderful places to work and learn. So they work very, very hard. Yes, they yes, they do. Um, so first wanna take the opportunity to say thank you. And then I do have a few questions. Um, we, the deadline for spending all of the ESSER money was is this month, right? It's at the end of this month. We're closing out the projects for the 30th. Uh, we got the invoice for the union work. Um, it was, I, I want to say on time and on budget, <laughs> a little bit, little under budget, but we ran into a few more expenses over at the main street than um, we anticipated or were planning for, I should say, but I think it's going to sugar out well. Um, whether we have... We have, we have to close the projects out by the 30th. If we have extra money, there is an opportunity to earmark it. We have to work with the state a little bit on that and really define it like we want to buy this and we just can't get it in the next two weeks. We're going to get it in two months from now. And uh -huh. they don't want it to drag on forever. But we'll know by the end of the week where we sit with regards to that. How much, like how much is how left? much if there's any leftover, but uh -huh. I'm glad to see that that essentially they hit the hit the budget that we were planning for on the first on union. So my hope is it's the same, and um, hopefully we, we ideally we don't have much money left over because we didn't allocate. You know they, that means they spent the money that we allocated right. to do it on the work they anticipated. So right, we want to spend all that money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you get a, did we get a chance to do anything to the playground at MSMS? We replaced uh, I think there's an image in there that old re re the old retaining wall that was falling down. Okay. We replaced that. We put in new sidewalks and up in the corner outside the cafeteria that we had some picnic tables during the program that were great. And they the school really liked them, but it was sort of sitting on dirt and they got kind of muddy and messy. So we put in a proper set of stairs and and some proper drainage up in that area. So people could keep their Okay. Dry. okay, great. Um, and then I wanted to also ask about the windows because it's been on the list for a while. <laughs> and I did the math to figure out it would cost about $2 million to replace every single window, right? I think that's the, that would be, I think if you put that out to bid, that's probably not a bad ballpark. Yeah. If you said, we're going to do them all at once. If you start breaking it and right. going over years, that number falls apart very quickly. But that's a, that's a good Num but a good scope to keep in mind that it's, it's a, a big lot of money. project. It's a, big it's project. a really big project. It it's a big project. And if we, it also looks like in our capital plan that it's really, the are really the only things we're planning on spending money on in the capital plan. Is that correct? Well, I do think that we need to work. I need to work with the building and energy committee to really talk about that because we were fortunate that we did Earmark some money for roofs, and we took care of the cafeteria roof and the auditorium roof. Um, so we're not going to be coming in on Monday morning to to wet floors anymore. Yeah. Certainly, in those two, but we do need to think about the roof here at the rest of this main roof at the high school. It is not currently leaking, but it is at the end of its useful life. So, I think that's a good conversation for the building and energy group to really weigh those pros and cons. Of okay, what's the next? What where's our focus next? And what would your opinion be? Would you say roof? My opinion would be to listen to the group and find out what everybody else's <laughs> opinion is. You're the expert. I think the group is going to want to know what you think. <laughs> well, well, I, I, like I said, I think there's more things to talk about. And uh -huh. it's going to make sure we yeah. have everything in, in the morning. How, how urgent of a need is the Windows update? Um, they, uh, Union Elementary, we need to stabilize the Windows 
the paint on the windows in the inner courtyard. Um, we have pre-K kids in there. Uh, those windows are, the, the paint is old, bad, old yeah. and bad and it gets beat by the sun. Uh, we actually, when we did our inspection, we went back there and our recommendation and I worked, I uh, talked with the state department of health of, you know, we aren't going to be able to scrape and paint those windows. So I do a weekly walk around for, to look for paint chips and things like that to see if they're deteriorating even worse. And fortunately, this was the first year it was ever, no, ever brought up to our attention. And, uh, it, I've been doing it, like I said, I do wheel, weekly walks around the inside perimeter there and, um, it hasn't. It's not like things are flaking down onto the ground. And they're not one quarter inch, less right. than a quarter of an inch chip today. Okay. So, um, but if that that if not replacement, at the very least, the paint needs to be stabilized back there. And I have an appointment with a painter just to get their sense of what is, what are we looking at here? This is what they do that all the time. They this is they're lead certified and they know what is needed to get in there, scrape to to uh, not resistance. The term they use, but scrape it, paint it, prime it, you know, and get it stabilized. Okay. That I think definitely that we definitely need to do um, this coming summer. Yeah. The roadside MSMS windows are also a priority. Yeah. For the second floor. Paint or replacing? Paint is less place. expensive, right? Um, yeah, but it's yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. We need to call that custodian to get them open. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. And also, I just, I, what I'm picturing when we talk about replacing windows is like, do we have kids and teachers sitting in like freezing cold rooms no. or, you know, in the winter? So it's interesting that they, the, 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 the philosophy on leaking windows has changed since COVID. It used oh. to be, <laughs> they, now people look at it and go, oh, good, you're getting more fresh air. So <laughs> the first time I heard that, I was like, what? Huh. But, um, and uh but no no we we pump a lot of heat now is it the most energy efficient thing to do no but uh-huh okay again even if you have the most modern building you bring 20 kids in from recess on a march day where they're all hot and sweaty you throw them open the windows you know you're, yeah. you're yeah. doing things that you wouldn't do on paper in a school building <laughs> because you're in real life because you're in real life and, yeah so yeah i was just thinking about the learning environment so. yeah 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 okay. no 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 and then there's an awful lot of projects on the upcoming projects list, which I think is great that you just are this one, if there's one place we're tracking it, um, but it, do you have a way of prioritizing? Like, are there any tiers? No, again, I think that's a, that's a building and building group okay. uh, discussion. Uh, I think that health and safety is the very first. That's, yeah. that always takes precedence. Then anything that's going to disrupt Learning and, and time in the classroom is second, and anything that's aesthetic is unfortunately third. Yeah. But, but. Says the architect. <laughs> that's, I mean, and that, that's the reality. Function too. I just care about function too. I mean, that's the reality of the windows, you know, a leaking roof to priority. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I just have a, a couple more questions. Um, we had, I've had a number of situations last year where the elementary school couldn't be in school because of pipe bursting. Yeah. Is there anything that we can do at the building location or working with the city to well, avoid Well, fortunately, that? well, fortunately, the our weak link was fixed last year. So one of those was us. Okay. The rest of those are out in the street. Okay. And that, but the good thing is that that one we clicked on our and it's been fixed and that shouldn't be an issue for another 60 years. Uh, but no, not really. Okay. Nothing we can do. Okay. Uh, and then I noticed that you have, you made a note that the softball field was just, it's, we can't replace it. Um, does it mean that we are, we have no there longer? There is no softball team here. Okay. It hasn't been for a couple of years and I, and I don't believe there's an anticipation that there will be. Okay. There weren't enough girls and they can play on the 32s team. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and then just one last question. Um, I saw that there's some work has gotten started on the safety updates and the improvements to the track. Yep. Can you give us a ballpark on what we've spent so far and how much oh. is left of what this board set aside? I don't want to do that right now because off the top of my head, because I mean, put that in the superintendent report? not money amounts. Oh, just sorry. on what off happened. Off the top of my head, we spent about 150000 I'm thinking. Okay. We've got the new throwing pads and the safety heading is here and it's concrete is there. We're just waiting to move some soil off site and then we'll reseed that area. So the new throw discus and shot put pads and safety netting 
is ready to go. The end line fencing for the um, basically for keeping the runners safe during the cross season. We have all the equipment. We're gonna we decided to wait until after the soccer season because we had to shift the field a little bit, and we wanted to make sure that it worked before we pinned it in with fencing uh -huh. with, with big screens or big fifteen foot screens. So that stuff is on site. Um, sound system improvement has been made. Um, we've got running mats for the uh, long jump pit. Um, and we've been working with the engineers on the layout. And I think we've got a pretty good layout um, that we've all walked, myself, Jim, Nate, Nathan, um, <clears throat> Matt Link. Mm -hmm. We all went out and said, okay, Again, when we plant these big end line fences, it's, everything's that's set. We're not going to dig those up and move them. So we went out and they were very comfortable with it. And uh, I think we're in good shape there. We just have to get some permitting and some documents for, for bidding that and see where we end up. Do you think that we, and it's okay if you mm -hmm. can't answer this tonight, but do you think that we have enough allocated to do what is the, the rest of the, these my, you know, safety upgrades and those. Kind um, of things. I think we're, I think we're not in bad shape. Okay. I don't think we're in bad shape. We're certainly not going to fall short. I mean, I think the, um, like I said, the safety improvements with the, the throwing events, the end line netting, like the, you're going to see improvements for sure. Yeah. Do we have, do we get everything? No, but yeah, <clears throat> we get most of it. Yeah. I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. And we're in a good position. <clears throat> Finish it all. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, got some high school questions. Um, this is the first one on the note about the track um, and the upcoming projects. It says for the high school track replacement, one point eight million allocated. Is that just left over? Oh, I yeah. I was, oh, was that deep in the body there? Page ten. Oh. One of those. Okay. Yeah. No, I apologize. That that was that was left over. Okay. Thanks. So yeah. yeah. Um, and then on the on the like flood proofing. Um, yep. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't remember the status <clears throat> of this. But um, has the electrical service been brought up, or is that it is it is right in my old office. Um, they've they've got they're going to do the final swap over over the. Um, in the first week of October when we have our, our days off here. So that'll be, that will be completed. That, that move will be completed by then. Um, FEMA has approved us for about $120,000 worth of flood mitigation for the basement. Flood doors, sump pumps, um, getting, putting in, either getting rid of the old bulkhead down there or putting in a waterproof one. But anyway, they've, they've approved that $120,000. Uh, we'll have to come up with 10% matching on that, but, um, so 12,000. 12, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we've received most all of our, we've received all of our allocation from FEMA, about 170,000. We should be getting another 15% because they hit some sort of threshold where they take it from 25 to um, 90 or from 25% obligation on the owner's part to only 10%. So you had to hit some sort of limit, but they, they made that, that cross. So we're at 90% now. So it's the last sensitive thing in the basement, the boiler roof. Yeah, that's that's basically the only thing that's down there now. Boiler room and dirt. And I think Eric, I remember you had an idea about potentially water proofing that room. Yep. Is that part of the that's part of that 120,000. Okay, great. Yeah. So that's, that sounds like we've made a lot of headway. That'll be done next. It's supposed to. It's supposed to be eighteen months after the event, but we're gonna get we're gonna get an extension so we can do it during the summer. Awesome. Whatever Thank it you. is. Fine. So I just have a quick follow up to that. So, how much of whatever repairs and flood proofing kind of things we've done have we had to pay for? Well, we haven't done any mitigation work yet, so. That would be, or what will we need to pay for? It? Just that twelve thousand. Well, that's that's what we'll, FEMA will pay us if the building group wants us to add on to that. That's a different story, but that's what that's what's planned right now. Right, because it was insurance, and FEMA has covered sure. everything else. I don't think I'd say everything else, uh -huh. but the lion's share of everything. Okay. Else. Yeah. 
I'm trying to get a ballpark of how much of a financial <clears throat> strain was the flood on the district. That's better to answer for. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question that we can find the answer. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Great. It's something that I think is important for us to consider as we think about the future of this building or a new building or whatever, you know, yeah. all the, all the wrestlings we have to do. I think, I think the facilities committee, um, when it gets going again, is going to have to wrap its head around like, you know, where we are at, are at now. Um, and what the, uh, the report that we, um, that we commissioned said, um, just in terms of like, you know, what would happen if we had a flood similar to the July 2023 flood or something worse than that? Because yeah. um, Andrew's made a lot of improvements, you know, a lot of headway since then. So I think we're in a much better condition. Andrew, am I right in thinking yours? This is homeowners that um, you can only access FEMA money once. Yeah, Does that work. For I us believe too? that is true. That that and and certainly if you don't do, I believe we're allowed. If you do mitigation work and something happens again, I believe you have access to it. If you oh, okay. don't do the mitigation, uh, they don't pay you twice. But that's something we should probably get clarity on. Yeah. yeah. I think that was part of um, the the folks who presented to us. Um, was it engineering ventures or trip to engineering ventures? Yeah. I feel like they had a piece in there about like there's like a time frame or a percentage amount if you invest back into the yeah. so there might be something in there well that's another that's an issue with having to flood proof the building right if you improve the value by a certain amount or invest a certain amount of the value then you every time to... you're putting money into this bill, there's a certain threshold that the city has put in place and if yeah. we hit that threshold on any kind of improvement here whether flood related or not like the roof work yeah. would be considered toward that threshold that once you reach that threshold then you have to put her for you have to raise yeah. or something yeah. like that and it's cumulative i think yes Let's uh, right. um the track equipment we're mm -hmm. purchasing equipment and the the their the original there was a little bit of talk about a, a structure to store um, equipment. Can you kind of help us understand the um, current plan for storing what equipment we have and right. um, its vulnerability to? Well, I'll be honest. That's sort of we have we have uh, we have the large connex. We have the shed. I, the, I'll tell you the truth. We kicked the can a little bit on that because we the the biggest piece of storage that we would need would be for the pole vaulting pads and all that. And that one with the group, Jim and, and Matt and, and I, that piece was sort of the lowest priority that all these other things uh, needed to take, but they don't really need that much storing. It really was the mats for the, for the pole vault that would push us over the, over the edge of what we got, what we've got now. So without knowing that that wasn't going to happen this next year, um, we, we haven't put any more thought into that, but um, once we get through this three acre stormwater and the track permitting, you know, every roof we put out here has an effect on stormwater. So we'll, we'll have to start pulling that piece together. Would you not have pole vaulting mats then? Because we have no place to store them. Well, we don't, or, have, we don't, well, we haven't been doing pole vaulting yet. Right. Okay. So it wasn't, it was a sort of, we don't have it now. So that's the last one to, sort of bring up to speed. Got it. We're bring bring onto the campus. I just have one more. Sure. I think it's been a while since we talked about it, but the the bus, um, the middle school bus like traffic, is that still Maybe you'd know better now. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard much this year. I think the to answer to that is it is what it is. Yeah. There are no answers to yeah. Because we'd have to lose the front lawn basically to like create a bus lane, right? Yeah, and you yeah. lose most of that just to the turning, not even to parking the buses. Yeah. And yeah, backs up traffic and it's a bit of a mess when the buses come in. 
But I think uh, they I think over the last year or two they've they've been better at we've got quickly, our systems yeah, yeah. quickly yeah. loading and quickly, quickly unloading and so it's it's I think they queue up before the the before they turn on the red lights and when they put on the red lights they're yeah. And, and yeah. off they got a system. I've been in the mix of that in the mornings and it's really not that you know you're waiting but there's also kids getting off of a bus yeah. so let's make sure that the the number one priority is that their safety they yeah. can get to school not necessarily that I need to get home yeah. from my commute. It's not I my perspective was not too bad. Well, I think it's great that there's that crossing right there. Yeah. Because I do definitely. Think there's like a yeah, lot of like blind job. spots and people coming in. Those of us who live in the neighborhood know that at 8 a.m. you don't go that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go down. That's right. <laughs> but Nobody. I do think it would be a lot harder if there wasn't an actual crossing guard there actually helping kids because they'll cross those side streets and I think that helps a lot. And he's very good about making sure that. There's nobody who loves their job more. Than <laughs> Scott? So, yeah, Andrew, I, if I recall, after the flood last uh, summer, there was some like really intensive air sampling mm -hmm. um, in here. Uh, and if I remember correctly, um, fairly quickly, the, the air was was judged to be high quality. I would say it was never even judged not to be good. Um, is there any continual um, air sampling? I, I don't think I saw anything in the in the environmental. Um, no, it's not. A, it's not a standing item. When we have an issue, we we actually had a uh, a bit of a a roof leak from down below and. This <laughs> in this room um, and we got it dried up and mm -hmm. fixed and all that. And we had the air sampling and whenever somebody brings a concern to us, yeah. uh, Sue, Sue had a question. We had not come down last week and, or two weeks ago and we uh -huh. did some more. We haven't got the report yet. I've heard the results are good, but good. I, I don't have the official report. So it's sort of as a when needed. And, we don't have it. On the um, and then I noticed there was a, at the end of your, your note, the sort of executive summary, um, you mentioned the the needs ahead that we've talked about, and then you said unknown environmental concerns. And so, what are the needs around unknown environmental concerns? Um, that's just that that's really a a piece of we got PCBs. This this year, there's a lot of that kind of stuff happening in the school. So, I don't anticipate anything, but you never know. You don't know. Gotcha. So, and when you say we got, you mean there's the PCB testing that we may be doing in the future. That's that been we... bumped to next summer. Yeah. So it was supposed to happen this summer, but it got bumped to next summer. Mm -hmm. Summer 25? Yeah. Um, it, it's bumping so much that you can't, you, the website isn't, you, <laughs> doesn't keep up with the bumping at this point. Um, it will be bumped again. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. So, um, you know, the windows, the, the PCBs, the, we'll say I'm testing all the water again this year and all those kinds of things. Those are, mm -hmm. I don't anticipate anything, but they're out there and, and yeah. we have to address them when they come up. And then I also noticed at the end that there's still a head custodian position open at the mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Is that, is that a, a concern of yours that that position remains until it is? Um, we are very fortunate that Tom Allen steps into that role. I really wish he had someone to take the burden a bit. Um, but, um, but Tom is a, a believer that we've got to get the right person in here. We just don't need a person. It's a very, you got to deal with yeah. everything. And, um, it's, a, it's, we're always looking, he's always recruiting. He's always looking for folks. Um, and he's by no means not wanting to give up the role. <laughs> yeah. We're just making sure that he finds the right person because you have to be technical, you have to be personable, you have to be a manager of people, you have to be a manager of time. It's, I don't envy him. I respect him greatly for what he does. And I was able to do it. Thank you. Well, Thank you. More questions? Do you have any specific questions? Let me know. Great. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. As always, Thank much you, Andrew. appreciated. Thank you. Um,
Yeah, no, and uh, I just want to reiterate Mayo's comment that the, it's one of the most comprehensive reports we get. So I really appreciate it. Um, Anna did a fantastic job of giving us precise language about what we need to do next. Um, Is the lawyer ready? Uh, yes. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Can I, it was the it's one or the other or both? Both. You, okay. First so one. First you one. give the the justification, and then we approve the justification. Mm -hmm. and then we actually move into executive section. So do I have a motion for? I move to find that premature general public knowledge regarding the board's confidential attorney-client communications made to provide legal services to the board would clearly place the board at a substantial disadvantage if discussed in public. Second. Second. Any discussion or otherwise? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Anna, for giving into the, I think we might yes. a Yeah, thank you. Um, I move to enter executive session for the purpose of confidential attorney-client communications made to provide legal services to the board under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1F of Vermont Statutes, confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. So second. Second. Discussion, questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye, any opposed? Great, I think we are off to, and I just want to make a quick note that, um, that we go, we are going into executive session because this is what we do for every time we have attorney relations. It protects our confidentiality. It doesn't mean that we're not being transparent, but uh, for certain things, including uh, discussions with Attorneys um, on really any matter, we go into executive session. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's good practice. And we are going to come back. We are going to continue the back. business of the board when we're done. Yes, it's we a little bit more efficient. Uh, I'm, um, well, mostly they're in the Oh, Tim saying the audio is barely there. But that could be because Jim was mumbling. Can you hear me better, Tim? No, it's I'm nope. having some issues. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm not. I'm not sure why. Sorry okay. about that. It's just like a hum in the in the machine. Yeah, but I think Jim was mumbling. Me, you're doing better. Okay. <laughs> um. Huh? <laughs> so the. Um, so, uh, forgive me if Jim just said some of these things, but it helps to ground me to get to maybe repeat some of that. But so two weeks ago, we saw five or six options of how of educate possible educational uses for Roxbury Village School, and given that there's a number of different directions that any one of those could go, we thought it would help to guide board decision making to set some parameters for ourselves. So the, the top three that we're proposing, and we wanted to see if board members think there are other key parameters to set are, does the district have a need? Um, and that uh, so a need parameter, a finance parameter, like how much financial obligation and tax implication should we take on for this? And then the third one is, what does the Roxbury community think about um, the different options that we've laid out, including, and then in addition to that, the option of the town buying the building for a dollar um, from the district. So I went ahead and we have, um, we started a questions document a couple of meetings ago called the RBS buildings, building questions. And I went ahead and highlighted the ones on there that are the three parameters that we want to set for ourselves as a board um, to help us make the decision. And um, we don't have to, for tonight, what we were just want to do was put those parameters out there and see if there are any other main ones that board members thought should be included. And then um, basically task individual board members that if you have questions that would help you 
answer that question like need or pressure point. An example I could I could think of is when it comes to the um, magnet school, we have a um, we have a study that was done a while ago on a language immersion school. Is that enough to answer your question about whether or not we have a need, or do you have other, you know, are there other ways that you, other information you'd like in order to help you answer that question? Um, yes or no, that option one, yes, there's a need in the district, or option three, no, there's no need in the district. Um, what does the Roxbury community think? We'll be able to get a lot more of that, get that answered um, in, you know, at least partially next board meeting when we're in the in Roxbury and are going to set aside some of our time for, of the board meeting as a community forum to hear from the community. Um, but maybe there are, there's other information you would be looking for in order to be able to help answer that question. And then what is the financial obligation or tax impact the board <coughs> will put ask the community for um, is another one that we have to decide especially given that we, one of, I mean, the main reason we decided to bus kids from, um, uh, from Roxbury to attend Union was a big budget pressure. So uh, bef um, before we go any further, does anyone have any questions about these parameters? I like them. I, I, just a comment on, maybe some sequencing too, because I, because the financial obligation tax impact is at the bottom. And yeah, they're not really in an order. Yeah. And, you know, for instance, if we know that a certain type of magnet school is going to cost a lot of money, like let's not do a detailed study on whether we need it first, because that might not be the best use of resources. For a lot of money that we don't have we can't spend. I think I think we should add um not we're, we don't just care about what Roxbury community members think. We we I believe we care about what all of the community yes. think. And so I would just maybe edit number three to certainly Roxbury community members um have a, a, a larger interest because of the fact that the building is in their town and it's still something I think other community members um, have feelings about as well. Um, to that point, um, was this community forum, which uh, Montpelier obviously is welcome to, to join in remotely, but is this the only community forum or will there be a second community forum of some kind in Montpelier? Maybe not necessarily on a typical school board schedule. I don't know what that might look like, but time aside for people to remote in or to come in to Montpelier, or would we, I don't know how we would ask the community if that's something that they would want, if the remoting into Roxbury is not enough of an opportunity, I'm not sure. Yeah. Right now, that's the only planned community forum. Um, and then we are going to open up a, I'm just like picking a frame of time, two week public comment period where we'll do like, you know, it'll be a pop up on our website and there'll be, it'll be all over social media. Fill out this quick form to tell us what you think um, as a way of trying to reach as many different people in different ways. Um, and as you said, anybody can zoom into the community forum that will be in a couple of weeks. Um, we also have, and this is getting to another agenda item, so I don't want to go there yet, but we also have the fall festival in next Saturday where we could use that as a place of gathering information on this question. Um, but I think um, what I heard Scott say is maybe we have a fourth parameter that is what does the Montpelier community think? Because I think it makes sense, not that we want to be separating our two towns within this broader community very often. But given the point you made, Scott, about the Roxbury community, this is a building that is in their community. Rather than just getting rid of Roxbury on, in that line, I, I would add another question that that seemed. Um, I 
All right, Tim. Uh, I'd be curious. Uh, I think like three of the five opportunities were regional in nature uh, that were presented last last meeting, and they may be, they may have been theoretical. And there's not a desire among the region, but I I was struck by the fact that you know there's there's this trend toward regionalization in the state generally, and so to the extent our sort of regional um, peers are interested in a collaboration along the lines of one of the options that Libby suggested, I think I'd like to know that. So maybe it's some sense of you know, for the BOCES or the CVCC or the magnet type school, are there others out there or is it just sort of a non-starter generally? I'd kind of be curious about that. So that's an example of a piece of information that we would be trying, we want to get in order to try and answer that question. Right, is right. that what we're doing here or? Yeah, yeah, I, what I'm just doing is li we're gonna, we're listing those so Libby can go and do a little bit of research. Okay rather than trying to answer all of them tonight. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I would also, with that question, I would wanna know what the board needs as evidence of an answer either way. Is it Right, is it like survey of the superintendents or is it enrollment numbers or, yeah. What would, what would help? I mean, like from my end, you know, for the CVCC, it would be, probably talking to the CVCC. I know they're looking for other facilities, right? Some, either that entity or the um, sent the districts that make it up, like the superintendents, you know, is this a non-starter? Is this something interesting? I think I'm not looking for a, a deep dive. I mean, the BOCES I thought was the most interesting potential uh, idea and I know Libby you said that there is some opportunity for study there um I think at this point we're not looking for I'm not looking for like some kind of full-blown study or something just sort of a gut check from the entities that would be potential partners yeah I think that's what my I understand your question um my what what would the board want is, is like I can write an email right now and have an answer for the board by eight o'clock tomorrow morning from superintendents and telling you that I want to make sure that that is what the board wants. CVCC, you have a board member who's on the CVC board. Would would you want the board of CVCC to discuss it? Like that's a higher level conversation. I was curious as to what what kind of what, for lack of a better word, proof. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. I mean, I guess it depends what we're doing here. It's like, I think it's a iterative conversation. If there's an expression of interest, then maybe we would want to follow that up. If there's, if everyone's saying these are all terrible ideas, then I don't think we need a lot, but I don't, I guess it depends on what the decision we're making with the information is. Um, but these were presented as options. So I'm just trying to, I, I still haven't figured out how we assess them unless we talk to the regional partners that would be part of them. I agree with uh, Tim's direction and it's similar and I feel the same way I felt when we saw the presentation is I, I need to know um, like uh, what what the potential educational purposes the world of them are. Um, and I don't think the ideas necessarily will come from this board. So what that means to me is like, however one advertises in school building and asks, you know, what educational purpose would you, would you potentially use it, you know, do with this building? That's what I would like to do to see what ideas are out there. So hypothetically, Libby could send an email to superintendents or maybe not hypothetically, <laughs> to fellow superintendents in the area and say, this is a this is a resource of our district. If you were the superintendent in my district, what would you do with this building? Is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to rephrase. I mean, I if I was gonna go like rent out an apartment, an apartment, I know how I would advertise it, right? I don't know how to 
advertise a school building. Uh -huh. um, I kind of don't think it's an email to the superintendents. I think that that's one limited channel, and you also have to be really careful about how you phrase your question to them. So I'm thinking broader, like how does one tell the world that there's this building available in this you know beautiful small town, and do you have an educational purpose for it that you would propose to us? I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I wonder if that's um, does that not uh, is that the work of the board or is that the work of the of I don't I don't I don't know is that the is that the is that the board taking away the right of the town to determine what is best for the town. If we were to get a request, if we were to put out an RFP and we got a proposal for, I don't know what kind of educational school or educational structure or educational thing, whether it's mental health related or whatever it might be related, is that not taking, you know, is that not taking agency away from the town? And is that what we want to do or not? There's a tricky chicken and egg thing here. I mean, I, I obviously think number three to me is the most important thing on there. Um, but that being said, maybe then you don't really do due diligence on finding out what's out there. You just kind of rule out the possibilities, which is sort of the direction we're heading in. And then you just sell, you just move ahead with the dollar offer to the town of Roxbury, because then the Roxbury, town of Roxbury can really get what it would like. And, and I, I think I'd like, I mean, I'd like to filter this through what I think the spirit of the agreement was. And I think the spirit of the agreement was, you know, Roxbury had been running the school for a long time. And when the merger happened, Roxbury essentially gave us the school building with the idea that we would run RVS as part of our district for four years. And if it didn't work financially otherwise, and we chose to close the school, we would give that building back unless we had an educational need that would kind of further that use as a school. I'm not sure it was an invite to do a broad fishing expedition for whatever educational use we could find out, putting out an RFP, seeing if someone out, you know, in the four corners of New England wants it as an educational use. I, I think the spirit was that, you know, say we, you know, Say, say we had the money to do an immersion program and the study came back saying that would be a great idea. It would give us the latitude to do something like that, but I'm not sure it was a, like, let's scour the four corners of New England and see if someone, someone, someone somewhere out there has an idea for an educational use. And I kind of like Tim's idea on some of these regional things. I think a quick email to some superintendents who might be interested or to... I'm forgetting Jody. to Jody uh, just saying we we thought about this like is this something we should have a further conversation about or is this kind of a non-starter with you just to do diligence due diligence around some of those kind of more obvious ideas I think makes sense I don't know if it makes sense to really do a deep deep dive and just see if there's you know someone in Northern Maine wants to buy that and turn that into a Waldorf school. Well, which is what I think Tim was saying yeah. is like, let's start by asking just around yeah. the region if they if if any of these options make sense make sense or if they if yeah. they in their with their own like these are the needs of my district hat on could say oh yeah if there was a outdoor education focused school here. I could definitely see a large population of my, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. there that exists and we just don't know it yet because yeah. we haven't asked. So I think, but, the, and so then that would be like, okay, well, given the other parameters we've set for ourselves, financial obligation, what does the Roxbury community think and the Montpelier community think, maybe we would then go pursue that if there was yeah. interest from around, but starting by finding out that interest, I think is useful. Yeah. So, uh, Libby, I, I realize that you created this as a presentation. I'm looking at the presentation from two weeks ago. You created this as a as a starting point for the conversation for our board. But how much of this would be sort of ready for prime time, if you will? Like, if we were to share this and say, do any of these four or five options, Northfield or 
Pain Mountain, whatever they're called now. Um, does this does are any of these um, and um, appetizing to you, or you know, Jody? Do any of these you know fit within CVCC's vision? You know, and and sort of do that with like this is a slate that we're considering. You know, would you be interested in sort of signing on to any of these? So as I said two weeks ago, two weeks ago when I gave that presentation. Mm -hmm. We have had conversations at the superintendent's table about the BOCES idea and the um, mental health kind of facility. Um, and there is no desire from other superintendents. That's why I was asking, like, what kind of evidence does the board need for that? Like, I can shoot, shoot an email so that people can see actual words mm -hmm. that superintendents say, but, um, or, maybe not and say, this is what they replied with. The only one I have not, I have not asked Jody directly if she'd be interested. And that was the only one that has not come up for conversation before. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was asking like, what more evidence? Cause I talked of that last time. The other thing I did do because it was a question that was asked at the last meeting was the magnet schools in Burlington and the language immersion school in Jericho the question was asked of how many tuition kids have they gotten or kids who are tuitioned into those building programs over the years that they've been. So I asked John Albergini, who's the superintendent in Mount Mansfield, and I asked um, Tom, who's the superintendent in Burlington, how many kids they have gotten for tuition money for, for those programs. John's answer was that he has a wait list within his district for the programming. And so he doesn't have any room for tuition kids. Um, and then uh, Tom from Burlington's answer was, we barely can keep it afloat financially as it is. We've never gotten a tuition kit for anything in our district, nor has there been any request for it. They, they barely can keep the magnet school itself right. afloat. I see. So we, I did get an answer to that question from, because it was asked and I didn't know the answer <clears throat> last time. So, um, and so the language immersion, that's the one that there's a wait list. Within districts. Within, within districts, so there's not even an option to get to it. He didn't, yeah, so yeah. He's, then, he said we've never put it out there. And then what, Sustainability Academy, what are the magnet schools in? I only know the Sustainability Academy. I don't know what the other one, I think there's like another one, but I don't know what it's called. Because it's like, there's two very different answers and the, the magnet schools themselves are, are very different. Yeah, and that's what we were taught like the question was, could we get enough kids to, to tuition into the school to make the, it cost effective, I believe was the question. And the town of Burlington, which is a metropolis compared to, <laughs> compared to Montpelier even, to Montpelier and Roxbury, yeah. has never received a request for kids to transfer in and pay tuition dollars. Like there are magnet programs that have been up and running for a long time have never attracted a child to their school district from another school district is what I was told. And that they're very expensive to run. Sure. Maybe because I missed last week. I feel like I'm just going to be the skunk at the garden party and it's 8.30, so maybe that's why. But I feel like it's a little bit of a slap in the face to the Roxbury community to talk about like magnet schools or language immersion and all these things when we had to make that really difficult decision to take away their elementary school. And then we're going to yeah. then mm -hmm. put something there instead. That feels... And also, I, I'm like well aware that we had major budget challenges and we have them again next year. So I also feel like it's kind of a maybe not a slap in the face, but a little, it feels out of touch only to me. I'm only speaking as myself. It feels a little out of touch to talk about like adding to the budget or expanding a program um, when we know that we have another really challenging budget season coming and we had to make that really hard and horrible, you know, that was really challenging decision last year. So I, I feel like very strange even talking about anything because we took away the elementary school. So why would we... I don't know. I guess that's sort of a question. That financial I mean, parameters. It, yes. Yeah. That's well. That's yes. the. Well, right. and not just money, but like I just feel like from an emotional level, if I was a if I was a family that lost our elementary school because it was you know for budgetary and like consolidation of reasons, and then it's like, but then we're going to put in something else that we think what it doesn't sound like it's a revenue generator. I don't know. That just feels very sort of out it's of touch. Like you advertise it. Somebody says, I do want to run a daycare or something there. 
then it's like well, then that, we can't new. do that though. We have to sell it to Roxbury, and if they don't want it, then we sell it to someone else. Right there. One of the yeah. options was okay, a, rent a, a, town, a community center where we have an after school program, and there's a see a, that's different. Yeah, what Brett was different. saying earlier sounds if that's what Rock, Roxbury that's great. I just feel like the like magnet language immersion that feels out of touch to me. Yeah. Right. This is right. Sorry, um, the presentation that we did didn't include the current educational use, which is as an after school program for Roxbury kids, including a number of kids who never attended, some kids who never attended RBS, many kids who chose not to attend UES. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to have put to, to to really sort of, I think that you had some finances in there. So this is the community center after school. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, this would be inclusive of what's currently going on, as I understood. What, yeah, what that would saying. include that. Yeah. And so that's a possibility that the board could decide on, which continues to be an educational use, and it be, continues to be an after school center, potentially could even have a child care center in it, which could bring revenue to yeah. the district as opposed to the town. Potentially, yeah. which I don't know how much, and that's a hard thing to do, um, but is an interesting idea also because I know I've heard some folks that are concerned that taking ownership, so, you know, just a couple of folks are concerned taking ownership of the building to, to the town without a good plan could be could be harmful. Um, and but you know, asking. You know, the district to put the bill also seems, you know, it's like a challenging task as well. So, with an educational use, it's not as difficult to ask, I suppose. Not that we're making a decision on anything, but there, you know, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to see how happy people are with what's happening there now because on our last meeting, it was a Wednesday and it had opened on a Tuesday. And it wasn't clear what it was going to become or how much people would enjoy it uh, as it is to me now. Yeah, that, is that is definitely one of the options. So. Scott. Um, Libby, would it be possible for our next meeting in terms of like evidence to get like some projections based on the experience so far with the after school program? Um, like, are we likely to lose a lot of money, a little money, make a little money, make a lot, I doubt we're gonna make a lot of money on it, but, but so that we can think about that as one of the potential um, components of, of the use. Yeah, forward. Christina put that together. Um, I may have mentioned it last week, I may not have. It would, the, the after school piece, just the after school piece is approximately 80 to $90,000 would be added to our budget. Plus maintenance of the building, right? So is the- that yeah, we'd still be maintaining the building, yeah, which is about sixty thousand dollars. Did that also consider the current um, mechanism for supporting families that's at the middle school? It would be very similar. It would be very similar. Yeah. So we're talking like one hundred and forty thousand dollars to like have that be a continued use. Yes. Yeah. 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 Christina ran those numbers for me already. Just as it is right now, what you what you put in the community center slide as ideas had a lot more going on. Like could be the day you could rent it out to a day. daycare. Yeah. Yep, we could so. rent it out to a daycare. There would not be nothing that could preclude. Um, I don't know if that's the right word, but I know that they've talked about moving the library in there. Sure, why not? <laughs> you know, like there there's lots of different things that could happen um, with that and. The more use that built, I just want to like put it out there so it's not so everybody's knowledgeable. The more use means more maintenance costs. So and just administrative costs. And administrative costs. Yeah, I think in the community center, I think I have it on that slide that you'd want to put a you'd want to put some sort of building manager on there. Right. To, if there was stuff happening there all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who would represent, who would work for MRPS, you know, probably not a full-time position, I wouldn't imagine, but you'd want some sort of person running facility rentals and making sure that things get done and things are okay and all that kind of stuff. So oh, which would add to the cost. you have after school enrichment, which I, the program that's currently running is falls under that yep. category. Are there other but after school enrichment programs, I don't know, like a snowshoeing club or something like that, where where like Montpelier kids might 
like take advantage of the bus going down, snowshoe in the afternoon, and then their parents come pick them up. There's nothing that would stop that from happening now. Yeah. So this is making me think of what could help with the question of what is the financial obligation slash tax impacts that the board will ask of the community is if we could get any more specifics, like um, for the community center you have, it's unlikely that the revenue would equal or surpass the expenses. But if there was a way for us to see just like ballpark, like, well, we think it would cost this much annually to run it. And if that's, if the best ballpark for that is one and a half million dollars, because that's essentially the same kind of staffing as we would have had, or if it's more, then it would be good to know that. Um, and then if it's possible for us to know, you know, again, ballpark revenue, um, cause I think that would help us answer the question of the, of the financial piece. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you added a part-time person, let's say that's going to be $40,000. I'm not saying you should answer it tonight. I'm yeah, thinking like, this is the okay. for like yeah. next week or next meeting. Right. And just to get some kind of clarity, it sounds like it sounds like an email to Jody would be worthwhile because that's mm -hmm. that's an ask that hasn't been had. Yeah, I am satisfied with your relaying of the conversation with the superintendents regarding BOCES. Is the rest of the board satisfied, or do we want an email? Does you're, you you're shake good. your head? Do you say oh, not satisfied I'm, or I not am, email? I am satisfied with that. Is, is anyone does anyone dissatisfied? I mean, I guess I'm just curious, were these ever like legitimate options? Because it sounds like they never were the the magnetype and the BOCES. That's where I think I've gotten tripped up on this, that this was something that was something that was presented as oh, this is something we could do. But now I'm hearing that because of lack of interest, it never really was. Is it, is that how I should understand that? I think that the board could tell me to say, push it. We want we want to do some sort of BOCES right. there. Push it. Find one partner in the region to do that. Um, and I could make an attempt to do that. I think the magnet schools is a legitimate question for the board. It's But it goes under the parameters also. That's the board's decision. That is not my decision to make. So. Um, I think it is only fair to the board to have those options so you can direct me into what you want to have happen and get feedback from community members in both towns as to which direction the board wants. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if we get a stream of people next week saying, actually, we would like to pay $2 million extra dollars to have foreign language that's important to us as a community, it, it at least it puts it out there. So that's, yeah. I my my thinking in response to that question, Tim, is that I think all of these are legit options, and because any of them could happen, and we're working our way through a process we've never done before, so we're trying to figure out how do we answer the question of how legit is a magnet school or how legit is a BOCES. Yeah, I, mean, I think, but at present, I guess our our understanding is that we would have no partners for any of them. Is that accurate? As of right now, right? With the information that you've learned. Yeah. The information I have right now, there is very limited desire because of the location of the school. And okay. that's the primary reason. Well, that's, yeah, I guess that's, that is what it is then. I might add, Tim, um, I do think a couple of years ago, these were all kinds of things that were swirling about what the district would at any point in time in the future think about. What would be an alternative use of that for sure? And then I think the last two years have really um, have changed the financial and taxpayer ramifications. Yeah. I, I think it was very much of interest of folks, even I think when the merger was being discussed, like what are some neat things we could do? And um, and so I don't think they're, you know, they're out of the realm. It's just the last two years has been a bit of a um, dial back on what we can do. Yeah, no, I, I would echo that. I, I think if, you know, two years ago, they were financially much more, more yeah. viable than they are now. I've um, said multiple times before budget season yeah. last year that I would love to 
think about that building and what we can do, but the budget season has really changed. Changed a lot. Changed a lot of what we can do. And the do. weights changed a lot. Yes. Right, yeah. And, and from my perspective as a Roxbury person, that conversation was threatening and dangerous. Mm -hmm. And it creates uncertainty, which creates instability, which creates the possibility of losing teachers, which creates the situation that we ultimately came to quite quickly, which in some ways, once the conversation happens, the faster it happens is maybe just, you know, and very unfortunately, the best for the, the elementary school students, the teachers, I mean, it's, I, that's something that I came to, but I don't know how many people agree to that. Um, it's a tough conversation, but I did it. And I always wanted to shut that way. Yeah, and, and I think also, you know, just kind of going back to, to why they're in there, I think for the fairness of a community conversation, I mean, there are people who've been asking from day one, you know, why not a magnet school? And I, I think, you know, leaving that out of the conversation, at least, yeah. You know, allows those people to ask those questions and kind of say we didn't consider it. It also allows us to answer some of those questions as part of the process. Um, do we have what we need? It's, it's quarter to nine. Do we have what we need for October, what, second? Um, so right now, I'll just say we've, we've got our answer on regional interest, except for asking Jody if she thinks CDCC could use the yeah. building. We've asked for a little bit more ballpark revenue projections on the community center yep. question. I don't know about any of the other ones and expense projections on the community center. Um, uh, what was the one just between, just above community center? Oh, central office. I think any expense projections on central office staff as that option. Say, say that one more time, I'm sorry. So I was just recapping, and I have this in an email, but the um, the things that we're asking you to do leaving this meeting are email Jody about mm -hmm. seeing if CDCC could use the building, revenue projections um, for community center, ballpark, expense projections for community center, and the central office staff option. Okay. Are we still pursuing the central office thing? That to me is like not starting. Not really feasible. I don't want to make people do more work on it. I guess I'm just trying to not. Well, I'm fine if that's what the board says. Yeah. If if we want to narrow these options down tonight, I wasn't sure if that's where the board was at. So what we were trying to do was just guide the conversation instead of making any decisions. I mean, so I, I don't think we should narrow anything down tonight until we've gotten public input. Um, Right. That said, I, I think we can say that the central office has some obvious problems and um, unless public input changes it, I don't think it's worth instructing our administration to do a lot more work on that. Oh, okay. That's fine. fine with me. Okay. Uh, tabling? Yes. Yes. What's our tabling conversation? Yeah. yeah, that's at the fall festival. It's coming up next Saturday. No, and, the twenty. Right, next Saturday. Next Saturday, not this Saturday. Saturday. Next yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Sorry. Saturday. <laughs> that's a, that's a, ten days. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yes, in a week and a half on the twenty eighth, um, and the board. This is a great opportunity for um, the board to be out and in the community, go to where the community is instead of always asking them to come to us, and. Um, so we have um, a table reserved and we will be there. What I would love to do is have board members sign up for like a two hour shift to be at the table. And if we wanted to spend a little time tonight thinking about any specific questions we wanna ask in the past, just to give you all a sense, we've asked things like, what do you think our priorities should be when we go, as we go into budget season? Um, we've asked for general feedback. We've asked Rhett, you've, you've tabled a number of times with me. What are some other questions we've asked? Oh. Uh, we, well, we, we have great priorities. Yeah. You know, we were doing the community outreach with Mason, Nathan's work. That was mm -hmm. part of it. Right. Um, do we have any specific social emotional questions? I mean, I think it would just, we might have put, we may have come to some priorities and then said, what do you think under these three priorities? 
community outreach, social emotion. We could even ask that. That's right. You know, just academic. How are we doing? Yeah. And these are our three priorities. How are we doing? Yeah. Or, and I would love to hear recommendations for improved community relations. Yeah. What can um, we do? Yeah. So that's one idea is to lay out what our top three things are and just ask the community to give us feedback on how we're doing at them. Um, another, I was wondering if we wanted to use that time and space to get any community input on the question of the Roxbury Village School building. Um, another big topic of conversation that's been in the community for a while is the possibility of merging with Washington Central. We could say, what questions do you have about merging with Washington Central, about the possibility of merging? Um, or what thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, just thought uh, to spend a little bit of time tonight. I realize we're already over our planned time. I have loved to ask kids what's going well for them. Yeah. That's yeah. been a yeah. wonderful thing to do and yeah. see. Um, if that's, I feel like longer lunch and recess. When <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody, oh, bring our pets to school. We got Long lots of vacation. feedback that we should bring. We should be able to bring pets to school. Pets to school. That's right. So I am. Um, I'm feedback. going to be away, so I'm not going to be able to table. I do think having um like a QR code with a with a form that collects, so that the only opportunity is like to talk to people in the moment. Um, yeah, just multiple ways of gathering information, mm. um, I think would nice. be helpful. And I, I'm happy to set up that form yeah, and right. QR code That'd if that great. would be yeah. welcome. The high school kids <laughs> at, um, farmer's market like 15 years ago in AP Statistics um, did some surveying where they had people put dots on, like colored dots on the issues that they, I forget what it, they were asking about, but it was pretty slick. <laughs> and then gathered some feedback that way. So I'm going to put dots on the fence. Mm -hmm. Nice. What would we be asking to put dots on? Like, what if, I don't know. Do you, <laughs> do you think we should merge like Washington Central? I don't know. Um, whatever. Stuff like that. Yeah. You could do um, what's the best way to for the school board to communicate with the community and give choices. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. That's be one of the choices. Yeah. <laughs> could literally be put a dot on a dot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Or what are your biggest priorities for the school budget? Yeah. Uh huh. I think getting questions on the school budget would be great. Because mm -hmm. we I mean, can if put options dots, out there and then people, yeah. yeah, yeah but then, oh, then we can put an other and they could write it in and put it out on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like select the tax rate increase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jake, don't. <laughs> Jake's going to find himself in the dunk tank. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, I was going to say, who, who is going to be in the dunk tank? I, I am going to be in Maine, so I... I, I have a retirement party that night, so I told Natalie I couldn't. Um, oh, yes. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Talk to Natalie uh, around. I'm, 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 okay. I'm not that popular, but maybe that's you what you're that. on the time. You don't have to be that popular. There is the lineup on the door out front, but I'm sure they can fit. You can take my spot there, right? Um, I'm not in the lineup. Okay, and then yeah. with volunteers. I've just been I've just been hearing people who can't be there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Rhett, thank you. I'll follow up with you on timing. I will be there. Take anyway. it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes. I'll check in with Lynn and see if she can. Miriam, how about you? I just heard I heard something down there. I, could... I have a question. Jimmy in the morning, but it's a new 32, so I might be there with my team. Oh yeah, my kid, my kid's running in that. I'm gonna try and do both. I'm gonna go cheer him on and then I got it. Yeah. I think I might try and get my team to go because we were supposed to. I don't know, Natalie really wanted us to go. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you gotta come. It's so fun. The fall yeah. festival is so fun. How about you, Tim? Can you join us? I got to check one thing on the calendar that's unclear to me, but I think so. Awesome. And it doesn't have to be the whole time. The The festival goes from 12 to 4, but we can break it up. Yeah, I should be able to make some time in there. That's so great. I think we have what we need. We can definitely awesome. work with this to get good input from using this as an opportunity to get good input from the community. 
I'm going to hit you up for that QR code for sure. I have no idea how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, draw little dots. <laughs> That's what sharp is it for. Yeah. <laughs> See where it takes you. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, everyone. Aye.